Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video we're going to look at distant lights and how distant lights can help to light up your scene in DAS Studio. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in DAS Studio. I've already preloaded my figure here and I've already done a camera here. And the reason why my figure is a black silhouette is because I've turned all the lights off so there's no lights whatsoever. So as you know, the camera has an auto headlamp mode and I've turned that to off. So in my camera here, camera, headlamp, I've set it to off. And if I go to my render settings, I set my environment to scene only. So I only want lights that are in my scene only, that are active. And when I go to general, uh, auto headlamp, never. I've set that to never. And the reason why I set this to never is to show you what the distant light does without any additional lights. So you can get a really good idea of what the distant light does. So to add a distant light, we go to create new distant light. You can give it a name if you want to, I'll leave it as distant light. So your options might be like this. So make sure you click show options. So what this does, it says apply default settings. So when you apply the default settings, the distant light will be here at the bottom. So it will be at the zero axis, zero X axis, zero Y axis and zero Z axis, which is always at the bottom here. Or you can apply it uh, with, to the where the camera is positioned. So what I'm going to do is apply where the camera is positioned. So apply where the camera is positioned, do accept. And there we go. Obviously it's very dark and I'll explain that in a, re in, a, in a second. So our distant light is selected and we're going to now check the settings. So if we go to parameters for that distant light, there we go. So there you can see that the, the, the distant light is at the settings of where the camera is. So if I go to my perspective view and show you where it is, there you go. So that's the distant light there. Okay. So what the distant light does, it's similar to sunlight. So it will give you a similar effect to sunlight. So basically all the lights, all the lights will go in all the directions in every direction and fill everything up in the room in any direction. So obviously where you position this distant light depends on the kind of light you will get, which I'll show you uh, in, a, in a moment as well. So let's go back to my camera view here to show you. Right, so there we are in the camera view. So if we go to the light settings, so these are the light settings and I'll go through the light settings. So illumination just means whether you want the light on or off. So if I click on off, the light will go off and my figure will turn into a black silhouette. Okay, and then you've got these settings here, diffuse only, specu specular only or on. So diffuse only would be light that is on the diffuse channel only. So in this case, because we're using iRay as our renderer, it doesn't really, uh, diffuse only doesn't work with iRay. So it, uh, diffuse only only works with 3D light renderer, which we don't use because iRay is a, iRay is a much better renderer and gives you much realistic uh, renderings. So this option doesn't really do anything. So if you could imagine a, if you could imagine a, a fabric which is bumpy so diffuse means bumpy like a bumpy fabric or bumpy for example like clothing if you can imagine the light coming in like this the light's going to come in and most of it will get most of the light will be trapped here in the clothing and only a little bit will come back and this little bit that comes back in different directions we won't be able to see so we don't get that uh, we don't get like a reflection like you would get in a mirror or a, like a, a shiny surface. So that's what that means diffuse. So if you think of it like clothing, because if you can imagine like clothing, when light hits clothing, it doesn't really reflect back unless there's something reflective on that or shiny on that, on that uh, item. Okay. So the next setting is specular only. So what that means is the light will only hit, hit, um, specular the specular channel so specular is like shiny shiny objects shiny uh, shiny uh, flat materials so for example like mirrors mirrors and shiny anything else that's kind of shiny smooth surface so if you can imagine like a smooth surface here uh, like a mirror the light will come off here's a light coming it will hit that and it will bounce right back off so for example like a mirror or some other kind of material way shiny. Sometimes I think latex is a bit like that. You'll get the light coming off latex 
uh, clothing. So that's what that is speculated channel. Now obviously, because we're using the IRA renderer, this these settings, the diffuse only and speculate only do not work with IRA. So any, if you do select these, nothing really happens uh, in terms of rendering. Okay, and obviously you've got the on option, which means the illumination, the light of the distant light will be on. Next bit is the color, which is quite straightforward. You can choose the color of the light. So you can choose whatever you want and the color of the light will hit there. What I recommend for color of light is to probably go for something quite low here, quite uh, low here at the bottom. If you really want harsh light, you can go up there obviously, but I recommend something here where you get a nice like subtle tint and it really adds to the, the effect. So if I choose kind of like this here, you'll see the difference in a bit. Okay, next thing we've got is the intensity. So intensity is like the brightness of the light. So at the moment it's 100, so I will whack it up to 200. You can put it up to 200. 200 is the max it can go. And you can see it's got a bit brighter. What I recommend with this is, I recommend you don't really turn the intensity up. You, re you leave it at 100 because we can always make the distant light brighter by using the lumens. And I suggest you use lumens instead of um, anything instead of uh, the intensity. Next is photometric mode. So if I turn, if I click that off, we just don't, when we turn photometric mode turns off, we just don't get the, we just don't get the lumen settings and the the um, the Kelvin scale settings. So if I turn that back on. So luminous is quite straightforward. It's the brightness. So obviously I would start off with something pretty high, 100,000 maybe. There you go looking much better already. And you can see our color, our subtle color that I've chosen as well coming through. Okay, so in Lumens you can set to whatever you want. I always suggest start off with a high number, um, 100,000, 200,000, and then work your way down to get the brightness you want. Now, temperature is obviously the Kelvin scale. So if you do a search for the Kelvin scale, you can see the different types of temperatures of the light you want. So if I do, 4500, which I use quite a lot. You'll see it goes kind of orangey. There you go. It goes kind of orangey color. So you could use that with the color here. So we can have a kind of greeny color. So you could be, you could use them simultaneously. So you can use the Kelvin scale and the color here to give you a, a mix of two colors. So that's something you could do. And you could do the same thing with the intensity. So the intensity here and the lumens, you could have a mix of ratio. So you can maybe put the intensity a bit higher and then maybe the lumens a bit lower if you wanted to. So that's something you could play around with. I'll just turn that back to 100. Right, what you can also do is if we go back to general, we can move the light, so we can move the, we can translate the light, we can move it the X, Y, and Z axis. So you can move it. You can also rotate, so if I rotate the light, you'll see the change. Uh, probably not the X, let's try the Y. There you go, the Y. So you can see the shadow has moved by me changing the Y axis. There we go. And as you can see, these are very long shadows that it's doing, so very harsh shadows. So it's, it's this distant light is probably something you wouldn't use on a regular basis because it's just that the it's a very harsh kind of light and it's something you would probably very rarely use, but it's, it could be used for, for example, if you wanted uh, sunlight to simulate sunlight in your scene and you wanted to use other lights. So if you wanted to use, for example, a distant light and scene lights like spotlights or any other kind of lights, then you would use that in, if you wanted to simulate sunlight. So that would be the main use of it really is to really use, uh, really use it for sunlight as an alternative to sunlight. So the reason why I say this is because if you go to the environment and if I change this to sun sky only, what will happen is the distant light won't work. So any any lights you have here, any spotlights or distant lights or any other lights you have in your scene won't work because only the sun sky mode will only work. 
if you wanted sunlight and other another spotlights in your scene that you want to use, you wouldn't use sun sky only. You would probably use dome and scene uh, or scene only. So in the distant light parameters settings over here, you you can't move, you can't translate the light. So whether you move the x axis, y axis, or the z axis, the light will not move because as we all know, distant light is like sunlight and you can't really move it. So basically distant light will just light the whole scene and it won't do anything else in terms of translation or movement of the light. However, you can rotate the light. So you can rotate it on the X, the Y and the uh, Z axis. So if I rotate it, if I choose, if I go across and just choose the numbers to show you what happens. And then maybe the Z axis and then some x-axis here. There we go. Right, the reason why the silhouette, my figures turned to silhouette is because I've gone too much uh, on the x-rotate uh, transform is x-rotate, too much on that rotation. So what I need to do is take that back down. Take it down a bit more. And there we go. So as you can see, the lights, the distant light's been rotated and it's kind of coming from the top here now and going down in, in, in that kind of angle here. So that's what you can do. So if, if for whatever reason your, your figure turns into a silhouette like we just had, just play around with these settings here and then you'll be able to get the light where you want it to. So as you can see, the, the light is very harsh. You get very harsh shadows. So it's not something you would uh, really use for something like this, unless that's what the effect you're looking for. Now in terms of scale, scale doesn't do anything. I can make the scale bigger and really nothing happens with the distant light because the light's going in all directions. So this scale settings here do not really affect light whatsoever. I hope you learn more about distant lights and how they can be used to enhance the lighting you see. In next week's video, I'll be looking at spotlights and more advanced settings in spotlights to enhance the scenes. So make sure you watch next week's video as well. That will help you with your lighting. And I'll see you in next week's video. Remember, you can create anything you can imagine.